What's up, people of the internet? My name is Abbott Captain. Today we're going to ask and answer a simple question. Should you play Bristleback? He's got some beastly stats, but does he measure up, especially compared to some of the other red heroes? We're going to find out in today's video, so stay tuned. All right, Bristleback. So first things first, let's talk about this guy's stats. In terms of like raw numbers, this guy has some of the most impressive stats in the game, even among red heroes. I mean, sure, when it comes to just like raw numbers, he's not quite as beefy as Axe, but he could be like that. That's that. <laughs> we can get into his passive later. But just in terms of raw numbers, he easily competes with other red heroes like Legion Commander and Keep the Bull. The only thing he's missing as a red hero is armor. I think he's actually the only red hero that we know of right now that doesn't have any armor. But of course, this is when we roll into his passive. The way his passive works, and this is a little bit actually complicated, so I'm going to explain it. Basically, when Bristleback is on the board, he has an arrow pointing in a direction. And sometimes that's going to be pointing to a hero. If there's a if Bristleback is pointing to a hero and that hero dies for any reason, then Bristleback gains two armor. So if Bristleback is looking at the right and the hero to the left dies, he doesn't gain armor. If he's facing the hero and he hits the hero in combat and, the, and that hero dies, he gains two armor. Or if he's facing the hero and the hero dies like Thunder God's Wrath or something, Bristleback also gains two armor. So even though he doesn't start with any armor, he can very easily gain armor. And let me just say, <laughs> in certain matchups, it is exceptionally easy to give Bristleback that two armor bonus. In fact, there are some games where you don't even have to do anything. You literally just show up and Bristleback's gonna get that two armor because there's gonna be times when Bristleback, like straight out of the gate, you're gonna play, you're gonna open up the game, Bristleback comes into the lane and he's up against Rix with seven health. He's up against Zeus. He's up against Crystal Maiden. And because it's early game, you know, the opponent doesn't have the spells, the items to buff up their heroes, to prevent the damage. And Bristleback is just going to slam into that hero and get that two armor right off the bat. So it's actually very possible, very reasonable to get that two armor in the first round, especially when you consider all of the red utility spells that makes sure that Bristleback is pointing at a hero so that he can get that kill. There are two cards we know of that are perfect matches to Bristleback. The first is New Orders. New Orders is really simple. Basically, you cast on an ally and you get to change the direction of that arrow to make sure that Bristleback is smacking into one of those heroes. The second is Duel, the premier spell of Legion Commander. The spell's pretty simple. You cast on a red allied hero and then you target an enemy and those two smack into each other. So if you target a hero, obviously, this is an excellent opportunity for Bristleback to deal combat damage to an enemy hero and get that two armor bonus. So the great thing about these two spells is that they're both under three mana, meaning you can play those turn one right out of the gate. So it's incredibly, incredibly easy to get that two armor on turn one. And then you have this absolute beast of a hero with eight attack, two armor, and however much health he has left over, which is probably going to be still pretty significant because the dude has so much health. Like, this is the cool thing about Bristleback, right? He doesn't have armor which sucks, but because he doesn't have armor, he has higher stats with attack and health. His attack is so high, even higher than Axe's. He's got eight attack that kills practically every hero in the game, except for like a handful of red heroes, I think. His health is so huge, which is massive because <laughs> high health pools and high armor combo together perfectly, making Bristleback just as absolute meat mountain muscle man that takes so much damage to just, he just soaks up so much damage. I have seen plenty of matches, both played personally and watched online where Bristleback just completely runs away with the game where he just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and doesn't die. So when it comes to like soaking up damage, you probably can't do better than Bristleback. He is about as tanky as it gets, potentially even tankier than Axe because one or two hero kills down the road and he's got better stats than Axe easily. The other red spell that we can kind of use early game to help Bristleback secure those kills is Poise to Strike. However, with so much attack, we really don't need an extra four attack to secure those kills. Sure, if you're up against, you know, Axe or uh, Legion Commander or Keith the Bull, then you might need that extra attack damage to punch through that armor and get the kills. 
But for the most part, I feel like you can probably kind of reliably lean on his massive attack damage to get those kills. So really, in general, I think you can get away with just duel and new orders. Um, you might not even need Legion Commander. New orders is probably sufficient to help get the kills you need, especially in early game when the opponent just doesn't have the answers. That's one of the appeals to Bristlebeck. You just don't need a lot to bring him online compared to someone like Crystal Maiden, right? Crystal Maiden's super vulnerable. You've got to almost always put her in one of the, uh, like the second or the third lane so she'll stay alive long enough for her passive to affect the other two lanes you need you know protection spells you need um health and armor abilities to keep her alive you need a lot of supporting cards to keep crystal maiden alive to make her useful bristleback just doesn't have that problem you just smack him down to the board and he does work right so next up let's talk about his premier spell which i think is tied with confl conflagration for the hardest to pronounce card name in artifact and that is viscous nasal goo so as far as red spells go just in general red spells aren't super super strong right what the red color wants is just to have a really strong hero and because the red color invests so heavily in their massive heroes that means that sort of their color budget gets decreased for spells because they're just their heroes are so strong so viscous nasal goo is in my opinion one of the weaker red spells that's not to say that it's a weak red spell or that it's a bad red spell it's just not as strong as other competitors like duel or berserkers call in my opinion what viscous nasal goo does is pretty straightforward it costs four mana you cast it on a target and they modify which means permanent minus two armor this in theory is good for bristleback because lower armor means he can secure those kills and get more armor and sort of spiral out of control however just the issue i have with it is it's a little pricey for what it does you kind of have to invest a lot in giving someone minus two armor and sometimes i mean it just doesn't matter right i mean if it's turn four and you're up against a Rix in the lane, and you've got Bristleback against Rix, you just don't need the armor penalty, right? <laughs> there are so many heroes that Bristleback will just kill right out of the gate that the minus two armor is, you know, it's, it's all right. You definitely want to hit heroes with it, but I'd say it's really only going to be useful more towards the late game when people are really stacked with like armor items and health items and they become these unkillable like 15 health three armor monstrosities so you need spell cards like nasal goo to try and like take down some of their stats and make them a little bit more manageable because that's kind of the issue with red right red doesn't have kill spells like chew you're dead doesn't have direct damage like pick off or no accident what red wants to do is kill people by smacking into them in combat. So to that end, they have to make sure that they win those combats by having as much attack, armor, health as possible, or in Bristleback's case, making sure that they have as little attack, armor, or health as possible. Viscous Nasal Goo really supports like a heavy red approach where you're really expecting to win combat. So you might be tempted to splash red and use Bristleback as like a tank for a slower deck. So let's say you've got, you know, a bunch of blue heroes and you need someone to sort of tank frontline for you and soak up some damage you think okay bristleback he's an awesome tank i've got blue spells so i can get hero spells which will give him more armor so i should put bristleback in my really really slow blue deck and sure that's an option but in that case i think you'd probably be a little bit better suited going for someone like axe or legion commander because the thing about bristleback is like viscous nasal goo is really sort of promoting that red approach of, of combat damage and if you have bristleback as like one of the only heroes in your deck that really focuses on dealing lots of combat damage, and you have you know Zeus and Crystal Main and a bunch of other weaklings, then you're not going to get a whole lot of value out of Nasal Goo. Um, Nasal Goo wants to be paired with people like Axe, Legion Commander, uh, Lycan, and other just beefy characters that like to brawl in the front line. And I'm just not sure that a slower deck filled with weaker heroes are going to get a whole lot of mileage out of Nasal Goo. So next up, let's talk about items. With Bristleback, I know it's really tempting to give him, it's like, oh, he's a tank, let's give him defensive items. But to be honest, I feel like a lot of times that can kind of be excessive, especially with armor item. Once he gets his initial two armor and maybe even four armor, you kind of don't really need any more armor on him. I mean, sure, more armor is always better, but if you get like a leather armor or stone hall plate, you're probably better off putting that on a different hero instead, because how much armor can one hero possibly need? 
Instead, I think you're probably a little bit better suited focusing on health so you can soak up more damage with all that armor or attack damage. Because if you give him one of those massive swords or give him cleave damage, he can more easily whittle down heroes or one shot heroes and get the defensive um, buffs from his passive. So in a way, you can kind of think of offensive items like broadsword or poaching knife as being defensive items for bristleback right you give him plus attack he kills someone and then he gets plus shield so you don't have to spend your defensive items on bristleback i would probably encourage you to focus a little bit more on offensive items for bristleback more so than average heroes with the exception of health items health items are incredibly powerful on bristleback especially since you need bristleback to survive combat in order for him to benefit from his passive so if bristleback smacks into another hero and they both die that passive doesn't trigger so for that reason Getting, giving us some health items like Furline Cloak, for example, would be really, really exceptional. The other thing I would really encourage with Bristleback is to try and find movement items. There, there is such a thing as too tanky an artifact. Sometimes you will play heroes like Axe or Bristleback in a lane, and they're so freaking unkillable that you can't pull them out of the lane even when you want to because they just don't die. So I would really consider things like face boots for Bristleback to move them around where you want to move them or link dagger so we can switch lanes. Scroll of Town Portal would be really phenomenal because trust me, once you give him a really strong weapon and some like massive health item like a fur line cloak and his uh, passive gets buffed up a couple of times, no one in their right mind is going to want to send someone to deal with your 12, 4, 15 bristleback. I mean, that's just insane. And it's totally doable because <laughs> he just gets so big so fast. So since your heroes are going to be avoiding this massive beast of a hero, you're going to have to find some, some sort of mobility that will get him out of lane into the lane that you want. So overall impressions of bristleback, he is definitely one of the stronger heroes. He has incredible stats. He has strong, really strong early game. He has decent late game. His premier spell is good, not great. Definitely a little bit more useful in brawly decks like red and green decks, as opposed to really slow decks that, you know, have really heavy hitting spells that hit massively because you're starting to get a whole lot of mileage out of that minus armor. With the exception, of course, of spells that hit repeatedly over time. I'm looking at you, Eclipse. If you can hit a hero with minus two armor, bringing them down to uh, total collectively minus two armor and eclipse hits them that is five damage per eclipse charge rather than three damage so if you can have a spell that repeats then ooh, oh my god the pairing is perfect but in general i'd say his overall kit is flexible enough that you could fit him into a lot of decks if you need high damage he fits if you need a tank who soaks a lot of damage he also fits if you need debuff he fits so he does enough things well that you can fit him in just about any deck that has red in it so overall i think i would rank him as one of the higher tier heroes probably not top tier like best of the best but he's definitely up there so should you play bristleback yes absolutely he's a strong hero he performed excellently when i played with him at pax i hate coming up against him because he's so incredibly hard to kill and worst of all for a tank for someone so tanky he shouldn't hit that hard but he does so just you're gonna have to sacrifice many blue and black heroes to the bloody altar that is Bristleback. Trust me on this. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, this video is a little bit shorter. I'm trying to cut it down. I've heard a lot of people say that I need to make my video shorter and ramble on a little bit less. So let me know what you think about this video. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Dabacab out.